Hi, I'm Melissa Bantug, the Johns Hopkins Breast Cancer Program. I'm here today with Dr. Connolly, who's going to talk to us a little bit about clinical trials. Dr. Connolly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Dr. Connolly, can you tell me why clinical trials are so important to cancer care? Yes, a clinical trial uh, essentially is investigating a new drug, for example, um, but it can also investigate a new test or a new device or procedure or even can investigate uh, issues such as quality of life um, in cancer patients and it's very important because it may provide a new treatment or test for patients in the future um, and also um, provides very good care for patients as they proceed through the study. Uh, and you hear patients talk about different types of clinical trials, so phase one, phase two, phase three. What's the difference between different clinical trials? So a phase one clinical trial is the earliest phase of study and this usually involves patients who have advanced cancer where we are trying to look at, for example, a specific drug, how best to give the drug, uh, the best dose to mm -hmm. give, and also look at how safe the drug is. Once we have some of that information, we proceed to a phase two trial, which usually enrolls more patients and again is looking at safety, but also looks at how effective the drug is. And once we have the information from phase two trials, we can move on to a phase three trial, which is usually testing, for example, a new drug and comparing it to the standard of care, which a patient may receive in any clinic. So are there risks involved for a patient participating in a clinical trial? Well, patients enrolling in a clinical trial are very well informed. Mm -hmm. So they are brought through a clear consent form prior to agreeing to participate, in which all the potential side effects of the medication or test are gone through in detail. And if the patient is happy to proceed, uh, they can sign the consent and enroll in the study. Um, also, patients are very carefully selected for clinical studies. So um, it is important for us to know that a patient is strong, does not have any serious medical, medical conditions because that may predispose them to more side effects. Mm -hmm. And while the patient is on the study, they are very, very closely monitored and any side effects that are experienced are reported uh, to, for example, our institutional review board, which is there to protect patients. Mm -hmm. And if at any point um, the study is felt to be unsafe, uh, beyond, for example, standard of care treatment, or the patient wishes to stop being on the study, they can, of course, do that. In terms of breakthroughs, you hear a lot of clinical trials, and are there ever those magic bullets, those things that really kind of game changers? Yes, and actually more and more we're finding that with new targeted treatments that are being developed. Um, this is really an area that is, has exploded in recent years. One of the earlier examples would have been, for example, um, the Herceptin treatment or trastuzumab, which many women with HER2 positive breast cancer can receive. And this would have gone through the same rigorous process as I've described, starting with the phase one studies. Mm -hmm. And in those early studies, it was shown, for example, that Herceptin was very safe. Um, and was also showing uh, good responses in patients who had had many treatments before. And this prompted further development of the drug. But those patients who participated in the early stages, the phase one stage, um, also received a lot of benefit, which was great for them. Mm -hmm. And this would have been even before the study came to market. So using a drug like Herceptin, has there ever been a situation where we see something approved, for instance, in the metastatic setting, and then we've been able to extrapolate that information to patients living with early stage disease? So yes, so like with many treat new treatments, it started to be investigated in patients with advanced breast cancer or metastatic breast cancer and um, showed very, very good results in those patients. Mm -hmm. And in those patients, it has been shown to improve symptoms, improve quality of life and actually prolong life. And now um, this has been transitioned to the earlier setting, for example, women with curable breast cancer who are undergoing surgery and can either be given before or after surgery and again has been shown to save lives. Wow. Should a patient who is interested in going on a clinical trial worry about not receiving any treatment at all? So for instance, a placebo or a sugar pill? So um, that is not common at all. It, usually a new treatment is compared to a standard treatment. Mm -hmm. So any patients enrolling in a treatment trial will be receiving some form of treatment. Sometimes patients do receive a sugar pill or placebo, but it's always in addition to standard therapy. So we never enroll a patient in a study and don't give them treatment. So a patient shouldn't worry that they'll no. get nothing at all? No. If a patient goes on a clinical trial, will she still be able to see her own doctors, her own medical oncologist, or other cancer doctors while enrolled in the clinical trial? 
So usually that is the case. Mm -hmm. um, all of our physicians here, for example, participate in these studies. So if uh, a patient is enrolled in a study, they can usually see their own doctor. There are specific cases where a drug is very, um, uh, very new and needs specific expertise. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, sometimes another doctor will see the patient. Are there ever individual benefits that patients will see by enrolling in a clinical trial? So as I mentioned earlier, um, sometimes patients are receiving a treatment which will turn out to be a breakthrough treatment mm -hmm. and allows that patient to receive that therapy a lot sooner than they would otherwise. And it takes many, many, many years to bring a drug from the early stages to being actually approved by the FDA and being available in every clinic. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of the main um, possibilities. Sure. Um, also, when patients are on a clinical study, they are very closely monitored. They have um, significant increased input from our nursing staff and our research staff. And really, they are very well supported, um, even more so than standard of care mm -hmm. treatment. And of course, um, there's also always the, the hope that we're going to help other people. So any of these research studies are aiming to help future patients, which can be very important. And one final question, why is it important for a patient to participate in clinical trials if he or she has been diagnosed with cancer? Again, clinical trials are important because they bring new treatments to those patients. Um, they bring treatments that may help that person live longer and live a, a more full and symptom-free life. Mm -hmm. Um, so here at Hopkins, we are very in support of patients participating in studies so we can improve outcomes for, for patients both now and in the future. Wow, Dr. Connolly, this has been so helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us.